How are you doing, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Inks, my G is Electronics. Today we're going to have a look at the, one of the problems I have encountered in my workplace. And hopefully by the end of this video, you can take some tips and tricks of how to go about if you have encountered a problem the same as I did. And that problem was my uh, VLT drive, which is VLT 2800 uh, downforce drive uh, burned down. So basically broke down one of our printing machines and I need to make a drastic decision and fast how to go about it. In this video we can have a look at it, uh, how did I uh, diagnose why the machine stopped in the first place, where the machine got the signals from, and we look into the drive itself and my thought process, or pro thought process of replacing the drive to something different, something much cheaper rather than trying to source something similar to what it was and uh, spending a lot of money for something that we don't really need. So, uh, so yeah, that's what we're doing today. Without further ado, let's get started. So this is the guy that broke down. So uh, how did we find out that this is the guy who broke down? What machine did? The machine just said, hey, I'm not gonna run. The PLC has got received a signal back to his brain saying there is a fault in print unit uh, three and I'm not gonna go until you're gonna sort it out. So first thing we're gonna look at like how does PLC know how where the problem is and how did he get that information from that drive? So to do that, we need to analyze the inputs and outputs on this drive itself, what is available. As you can see in here, let me go into a better section in here. What you can see in here, this guy in here is relays. Okay, these, guy, these guys in here is uh, inputs and digital outputs, digital inputs, digital outputs, and this guy in here is made for communications. So how does drive would know possibly be able to send the information back to the PLC for him to know that it is at fault? In this case, you can see in here, as just showing this this guy in here, this in here is a communications RS-485. It is not used, so we're discounting that. So the next one is the relays. So what happens is most of the drives, most of the drives that I know I've used, they all have relay outputs. And some of them have one relay, some have two relays, some have switched relays, some have three, four relays, depending on what kind of drive you have and the more advanced they are, the more options they give you. But one thing you need to realize is every single digital input and relays and output can be programmed for all the drives. So in my case, I can see my drive in there has got two cables coming out and I know for a fact that they're going back to PS. PLC, and that is what sends the information to the PLC saying the drive is in trip or is in fault. So what happens in here is for you to figure out what actually drive sends back to PLC because the relay output can be programmed to output anything. In most cases, when, when I say anything, it's, it's, it's a different type of setup, what they call the, a programmed output. There's prox or quite often there's more than 10 options you can add to it. In most cases, uh, these outputs are set to drive status. What does it mean drive status? It means is, it, is the drive healthy or drive is in trip mode. So most of this, this is most default thing that they did quite often most people use it. So I presume this is the way how drive A is able to communicate with the PLC tell him that he's got a problem. So what I did in here, so you can see in the there. so basically when the drive is in healthy, it is in normally closed state. When the drive is not healthy, then it, it is in normally open state. So uh, what I did, I because uh, I tested it in here that uh, it was in normally open state. So I just uh, closed it down and PLC was able to remove the fault. So I knew this these two wires are, are the ones that send the information back to PLC. So next I need to figure out what I'm gonna do with the drive. When it comes down to the drive, now obviously I can't get that drive anymore, it's no longer manufactured. So I needed to come up with the next best option to understand what role does drive play in the machine. So then I can, once I've figured that out, I'll be able to make my decisions or have a go about the issue. And to be able to possibly do that, let's try to start analyze the actual inputs. So what we have in here, we have a, a this bank of inputs, as you can see, there's quite a few cables going into it. And remember guys, all these inputs can be programmed to do many different things, and I'm gonna show you in a minute how many, actually quite a lot. So let's jump onto Danforsys manual. As you can see in Danforsys manual, as you can see the input 18, 19, 27, 29, and 33 can accept all of these options, and they could be anything out of these. So uh, that's no problem. So, uh, and in here we can have a look at it in here. So actually we're gonna get to that page in a minute. So uh, now that we, we have this page to something to reference to, let's go into manual. 
Guys, the manual for you is going to be your best friend in these situations because it's the manual will more or less tell you what's been uh, what's been connected to and where the fires are going to. So this is how you'll be understanding what inputs are be used and more or less give you a broader understanding what those inputs are doing or how they can switch and so on. So manual is your best friend, so do turn to that. So what I did in here, there is my manual page. This is the page from a manufacturer's uh, a manual itself, which is the, which is their uh, electrical manual. And let's have a look what we got in here. So there is my, let me just... So there is, let's uh, get this in the bigger thing. There is our inputs in here, the, the three-phase input. There is our three-phase output right here. Uh, this one, for whatever reason, is not being connected at all in the drive. No, no, why? So, and this is our analog, as you can see in here. This is where potentiometer would come. This is our relays in here, whatever reason. Manual manual doesn't have anything connected to those relays, even though there is. Don't know why they didn't put that in. So let's anal analyze the input. So the inputs that we use is 18, 27, uh, which is the, there's a 24 volt supply in here, that which is the 12, and also is 29 and uh, 46 is actually an output. So, okay, let's analyze everything in here. So 24 volts going into RV3. So you gotta see, you gotta read the manual correctly. RV3 is a relay. So which means that RV3 is activating the start signal right here. So then whatever reason it goes into 27 and says no operation. If you look at into the manual in here, no function, no operation means it just does nothing. So uh, sometimes what you will have, and manufacturers have uh, different types of uh, different types of models of the machines and they, they sort of standardize everything and some of those wires are standing in there just in case they need to change it for something. So they put it in there, but no, there's no need for this one, but they put it anyway because some other modules will possibly need that input. So that's why they put just the wire across and leave it, leave it at that and put it in no operation. So in this case, that input is not used. Next, let's have a look at what other option we have in here. And then we have a look at this, this overcurrent in here. Right there. And then it says slow it down. So what does these things could mean? And do I actually need them? So it's great to have them. Let's have a look at the manual in here so if you go into page in here it says in here so you can also program the frequency converter to give a warning signal we are one of the digital outputs which is 46 select etr trip one to four if you want to trip when a motor is overloaded according to calculations so you can pretty much set up when the temperature reach certain level and you will turn uh, send the drive uh, i don't know stop send the signal out or whatever in this case what i can see in here what it does it sends 24 volt signal into a uh, terminal 29 and most likely terminal 29 is set as a preset frequency and it will slow the drive down and uh, try to uh, try to but i don't know uh, cool the cool thing well, well obviously if the drive slows down it's no longer using so much current so it's not heating up anymore and our current more or less disappeared do we really need that I don't think we do. So, I mean, it's fancy to have it and it gives you more options and things like that. But the way they set it up, I don't think we really need it. So I decided to completely ignore that. I will remove those wires and I will just put overload uh, inside my drive so the drive can trip out if, if the current is reaching an un 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 unacceptable level. So I'll, for me, in this process, I don't think I need it. I'll be quite happy with the standard overload and drive will just trip out. So I've known all this information now. I have decided that I can actually live without this drive for a day or two because that little uh, that little uh, potentiometer what you see in here that would uh, this guy in here the one that I circled in here it goes back to a front of the machine as a normal potentiometer zero to ten volts and. This is where you need to be very good friends with the operators. Operators will be able to help you out to better understand the machine. Because remember, those guys run those machines day in, day out. And they can give you the guidances of your decision making. This is, this is where you try not to be a complete balloon and thinking to yourself, I know everything better than anyone else. Drop these ideas. You're not. So it's your best friend is your operators. That's going to be always to helping you out. So I have discussed it with operator. Operator said, look, we don't really use that potentiometer. That potentiometer always stands a maximum. So I knew the drive always runs a full speed. So what I did, I removed the drive, put the contactor into it. And uh, what I'll show you in a minute, actually. 
found the action found this RV relay this RV relay in here uh, where are we here we go there's my RV RV relay there's my power supply in here which which was basically switching uh, this relay was switching my a three-phase contactor on and activating the fan and fan was boom clicking on and going at full speed some of you may think oh that's the drive is there for a reason maybe because you know it's such a quick start and quick, quick stops i understand soft start is more or less is required but it's not crucial it is absolutely not crucial it's nice to have soft starts and things like that uh, with, with the acceleration deceleration but you can live without it for a couple of day, day or two that's not a big deal so what i did i removed the drive put a contact in place and got the machine up and running within 30 minutes. At the same time, I went in, I need to make a decision what kind of drive I'm going to get. I could go to Downforce, find a more or less a suitable replacement, but that would be a mega money for very little what I need him to do. So I decided to go with very basic. Well, we have an account with some guy that can supply drives very quickly. And we just went for the Fender drive, which looks like such. Let me just do that. And there it is. So I wired the ring the following day. All necessary cables are sent in where they need to go. Very basic. As I said, most drives run pretty much do the same thing. You know, start the system, have a bit of a controls and, and so on. Some drives, the more advanced drives, got more and more options. And depending how complex your drive needs to work within your machine, then you can determine how complex, how how difficult, how difficult, how more 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 advanced drive do you need? In my case, as you can see, I don't really need anything anything advanced. I really didn't. It only did is starts and stops and goes a bit of a potentiometer control. If that analog input for some reason would have gone back to control and there would have been some form of PID control going on in in the system where we're controlling the flow of the air and things like that, I would have understand. But for what I could see, it's just up and down with the potentiometer and that is it and that ladies and gentlemen is how i made the decision to use much cheaper drive to replace this downforce drive for a um, much less advanced and to be able to uh, wire that in it worked perfectly well absolutely brilliant and it's got absolutely it's got it, it, the drive had as well the relay i was able to put the relay back into it so the plc knows the drive is there and drive is and the plc is able to control that drive however he likes and how we used to do it before and that ladies and gentlemen is uh, how i dealt with the old drive that broke down how i analyze it and hopefully you can get some uh, knowledge out of this how my thought process works and how i get things working as quick as possible for the company that i'm working for and uh, bring the best results so thank you very much for watching hope you enjoy the video if you do like the video do smash that like and do subscribe if you're new to the channel and you feel like what you're doing here so thank you very much and i'll see you next video